Did we do well, my darling girls? Did we really do well? We grew you up to be straight and strong, to do your best to know. Right. So welcome, Kate. Thanks very much for joining us today. Oh, that's fine. There you are. Um, <laughs> I feel that yours really is a hidden voice, which is the title of our series of webinars, because for a long time, under injunction from your accuser, you could not refer to that trans person publicly at all. And so you gave no press interviews about your horrendous experiences. Um, before I ask you to tell us the story. Oh, George has popped in with the thing said to mention yes. Stephanie Hayden, who is the trans person that um, you had uh, things with, is now suing Joni Walsh, who um, has written a lot of gender critical stuff. She's a journalist who has stuff in the mail. So he's picked on somebody else now, and I, we should all support Joni, and uh, I will certainly get in touch with her and message her some support. Um, please listen to our health warning before we start. I'm a 64 year old woman. I struggled to change my pronoun use after so many years of telling, as I see it, the truth. Since detransitioners came into public view and Kira Bell won her case, we now know that transitioning is definitely not necessarily a permanent state. And since Kate's successful appeal, we know that misgendering or being rude on social media is not a crime. This leaves us in an area of uncertainty with more legal cases pending. I remember, and possibly some of you do, Remember being horrified at the moment in Maria McLachlan's case when the judge instructed Maria, who was speaking under oath, to call the man who had assaulted her while dressed as a man, he and she, because today he was dressed as a woman. And I realised Maria had to make a horrible choice between telling the truth as she saw it and obeying the judge, which naturally she knew she should do. We'll be able to ask Maria more about that, but for many of us, this is an, uh, an issue between telling the truth and telling a lie and colluding in a lie is not something I wish to do. So I don't wish to offend anybody or upset anybody. Please note that if you are upset by the fact that I may refer to a trans person by their former gender, then please leave now because I don't want to upset you. Here, there's no judge. I do often misspeak. Um, as you get older, you might lose your words and say the wrong thing. And I need to concentrate on interviewing Kate, who has warned me in, to use her own words, that she is a gobshite who can talk for England. And I promise to control that so that we get all the important bits covered for you. Um, that will take up all my brain for now. Remember what our lost Shiro Magdalene Burns said when she, like Kate, was accused of being rude. She said, I'd rather be rude than a damned liar. So I rest my case there. Kate's case raises loads of issues. How the police and legal system treat women, especially mothers, the importance of social media. This was before Twitter banned the US president's account. What is hate speech and how does it relate to free speech? How are judges selected and trained or not trained? The psychology of trans activists. And having secured a master's degree in forensic psychology, Kate is well qualified to comment on all these. So looking into Kate's life now, Kate is the mother of two young children living in a small village outside London with no adult company or access to a car in the daytime. Kate, I understand that social media were a total lifeline for you. Like many people, you were radicalised on Mum's Net. What was your Twitter handle, first of all? It was Busted Wench. Busted Wench, right, because of course it changed later. So, Kate, tell us how your accuser Hayden first came to your attention. Um, it was in September 2018, someone had um, retweeted something Hayden had written and I put a silly funny emoji face saying lawyer, because I thought well they don't really come across as a lawyer. Um, and then they wrote something that I thought was quite uh, racist, in my opinion. Was so this um, somebody said in response to a person who Made it, clear yes, it was Dr. Drew, who was a who was a prominent poster. He, uh, the, you know, it was people like you, and Dr. Drew is obviously black. And I thought, well, that's a little bit racist, in my opinion. Yeah. So I quote tweeted um, Hayden and said, who said that they were going to the police about people. I yeah. said, well, let's hope they take a serious stance on your racism. <laughs> um, and that was it. That was. 
that was the tweet and i didn't i thought no more of it um two or three days later i got a message via um facebook messenger saying i need your details because i'm suing you i thought blimey this one's a bit Just of a sort. Just days later, no notice, no... <laughs> no, nothing. And they had written, Hayden had written to my university, my course uh, leader, to say that I shouldn't be doing psychology because how I talk on Twitter. And they hadn't contacted me first. They contacted my university. So um, luckily, my university thought nothing of it because, you know, they're not mad. And um, yeah, so he, the, that was it. I was going to be sued and I was to provide email uh, so I could be served. So I did, provided my email and was served. No, it's very much out of the blue, really. In response yeah, to it was really, I was outside in the garden with my son who was in the paddling pool splashing about and I sort of was going to take a picture as you do and I saw that that message pop up and I was like what on earth and uh, yeah just responded because you know I'm happy to respond to such things and it went from there really and then the police turned up at your home yeah that was a while yeah about two months later it was September we had um we had to communicate by email Hayden dropped the claim against there was four of us uh, one was the transsexual uh, solicitor and um hayden had asked uh, to, to for this to go away to sign an agreement um i spoke to my husband about it obviously and i spoke to a um a friend who works in law and they both just said look just make it go away sign the agreement so thinking nothing more of it signed it sent it back thought that's it you know there we go. Um, but this just escalated. So anytime I would like a tweet that mentioned Hayden or anything that had any connection to Hayden, I would um, get an email, say at like two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, saying, you know, you have been warned, you've liked this as per our assigned agreement. Da, 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 da. Now the agreement was um, only applicable to the busted wench account yeah so me being a gobshite and not one to be you know to shut up um i already had another account on twitter because i use it to circumvent the turf blocker because yeah. obviously i'm on all say, of the turf say what turf blocker is because not everyone may know about that turf blocker is a i don't know a program or something i think it was created by that paedophile Chandler's dad oh yeah, uh, yeah. David yeah. Chandler, yeah. Yeah, David Chandler convicted pedophile yeah, convicted yeah. so they created this turf blocker and anyone can be put on it basically and mostly yeah, women yeah, yeah. yeah. Most, mostly women you know it's going to be so I had this sock account that I could read full conversations because a lot of the time I can't read what someone's making a point about because I you know there's little bits and bobs missing yeah. so I um obviously I went on there and I saw that Hayden had um printed had shared a photo of the agreement or my signature and my name on their Twitter account. that's really bad anyone can imitate your signature then exactly yeah so I got a little bit annoyed and had written something about uh, a surprise you can remember giving your claiming pip for memory loss because I and I only knew that because Hayden had sued me <laughs> yes. had I not been sued I wouldn't have the blindest bit, bit of clue who the person was and what their, yes. Yes. their life is like I couldn't yeah. care less because he, he, um, he made it public that he had a he'd been ill and he had memory problems and he was on um pip is it correct yeah but that was that was yeah and that was put in the, the the claim so it was you know it was petty and it was silly but you know i i'm not very big and i'm not very clever <laughs> so i just well, did I it and, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm certainly big but um it's, it's so, just, I, just I just 
<laughs> it was something that I just, it didn't even really, it was just done out of, oh, you know, what a, I'm going to do this because I'm going to react. Yeah. That's who I am. I'm a reactory, you know, reactive person. Yeah. So then um, I got an email, obviously, straight away saying, this is you. I know this is you. And I said, no, it's not because, you know, I'm not going to go, yeah. <laughs> and um, then Hayden said, I'm contacting the police, for the, you know, because you, you're overstepping the mark. And I said, well, I have a, a family member who's a police officer in the Met and I have a friend who is a high ranking officer in the Hertfordshire and I've spoken to both and they've said to report you to the police because you continuously email yeah. um, and then that was it and I thought no more of it nothing I didn't hear anything from them and then I had a knock on the door on the 1st of February uh, 1st of December I was cleaning the bar the bathroom and my husband came upstairs and said there's three policemen outside Kate and I said, oh, bloody hell, better get changed. So then I put some clothes on, went downstairs, and they said, oh, we've got somewhere we can talk to you. And I said, yeah, just walk into the kitchen. And um, they said, do you know what this is about? I said, I assume it's about Hayden. And they said, yes, you're under arrest for malicious communications and harassment. And I sort of laughed. I went, oh, OK thinking you know it's just gonna you're just gonna take me and I'll have a chat and I'll come home I yeah. uh, didn't think it too much um and then he said we need your phone and your electronics anything you use and uh, so I had to go upstairs to get my phone because it was just on my bed and the police officer was following me two police officers following me into my bedroom um and my children were in the living room and the other officer who was downstairs went into the living room and said, look, does your mum use anything? Does she use your phone? I said to my 10 uh, year old daughter at that point, she was 10. And she said, no. And he said, he asked my husband as well, does she have access to your phone? My husband said, well, no, she's got her own phone. So they were quite, quite rude. The one officer was quite rude. One was really nice. The other one wasn't. Um, and then... I was I went to grab my handbag because they were like well you've got to come to the station and I went to grab my handbag and he says there's no point taking your handbag because we're going to have to take that off you and empty it and put it all in bags you know just take you know what you need I said well I haven't I don't need anything then so Not knowing um, how long you would be there no I thought I was just going to be there an hour and my husband would come and pick me up yeah um but so I was led out of the house the the mean officer said oh I'm as you're being compliant, I won't put you in handcuffs. Oh. I said, well, that's nice of you. Um, and I sort of just thought it was ridiculous. And then a fourth, oh yes, a fourth police officer had to come in because she was female and she had to pat me down. Um, and then she left the house. And then I was led to uh, two, there were two squad cards outside. So I was led to one of the squad cards and put in there. And um, when we were driving out of my little cul-de-sac, I saw the police van there where the other policewoman was. I thought, blimey, three cars. <laughs> for little Could have been burglars, <laughs> couldn't they? That's what it was like. Yeah, I was just like, bloody hell, right, OK. And um, then we got to... Domestic violence incidents. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't get that. And um, we, I went to the station, sat there, I was booked in. And then we had to wait again for another female officer to come and pat me down and I said at that point why don't one of you just identify as a woman and we could get this over and done with quickly <laughs> and then the police officer really had a go at me about that it's not funny you think it's funny and I said but it is it's ridiculous it is fun yeah and it wasn't then, so awful it's funny yeah and she asked um the woman booking me and she said do you need any feminine hygiene pack I said oh yes please because you know I didn't have During time period. yeah I didn't have yeah. time to to sort myself out and she said, yeah. right, I'll bring I'll bring one to you when when we've done your photograph and your, your fingerprints and so forth. Yeah. So then I was led down to the cell and I thought, well, I won't be here long, you know, so I'm, I'm <laughs> going to take it. I'm, I'm a bit hungover, so I might have a little. What sort of time of day was this? This was, I was, I was, yeah, I was taken, I was arrested at 10.30 in my home and was yeah, stationed by 11. So by the time I'd got into the cell, it was about half 11, 12, maybe 12, I think it was close to 12. 
So I thought, oh, well, I'll lie down. And one of the policemen said, oh, it's lucky because it's lunchtime. So, you know, we'll, we'll come round. Yeah. And I said, oh, great. OK. So then I was sitting on that horrible little bed thinking, oh, OK, you know, waiting, waiting, got nothing. And it got to my kids sort of nap time. And I started getting a bit teary at that point because I was yeah. like, I'm missing. Because, you know, no, I breast, not, not only I no breast feminine breast. hygiene products, no drunken yeah. water, no cup yeah. of tea, no newspaper nothing. to read. No checking, yeah, nothing. No interview, no, no one, nothing. you might have been forgotten for all you knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have anyone come no over phone, check no way, anything. And what, and, and the only thing you could have done was bang on the door. Yeah, or buzz. But I started getting progressively more upset the closer it got to my kids' tea time, you know, and, and obviously I was breastfeeding and my boobs were starting to hurt. Oh, God, that awful pain and the, all those bits that you get in your boobs. And, and I was bleeding and I kept stuffing oh, toilet Jesus. tissue. and oozing every end, as it were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know, um, we know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was really traumatic. And then at about, I think it was, uh, I think it was about seven, seven-ish, 7 30 they knock they open the door and said right and you'd have no lunch no breakfast no and i'd Nothing. be crying yeah and um oh. i went up to be interviewed sat there for an hour and i he basically the, the the officer he said what this looks like is just two people have had a fight and the person who's you know per, one person got there before the other basically yeah, exactly. so he minimized it massively he was like you know basically yeah. it's a silly little spat it is your side so Storm i gave my side yeah so i gave my side of the because i thought this will be a perfect opportunity to give my side because you know yeah. i can't say anything and i want to talk about it but um i think they sort of you know they tricked me into that but that's fine i'm and i was told that because i didn't look distressed um that that's you know that's not really a reasonable Oh, well, women are expected to do all the emotional yeah. stuff. Yeah. You're supposed to cry. Whereas, you know, yeah, if I'm, yeah, I'm not if I'm, you know, like I hate crying in public. So I of don't, course. you know, my it's husband, it. my husband doesn't see me cry much. You know, my kids yeah. don't see me cry. I'm not, I'm not, a, I, I just don't like doing it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not one who's going to make a dramatic, you but know, we know that you're probably of, quite traumatised by them. You know, a lot of people in trouble have with rape victims all the time because yeah, they don't yeah, have a stereotypical yeah. response. They're, they're deemed not to be rape victims. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, you're, so. you're deemed not to be a trauma victim because you're not, you know, yeah. actually popping tears out of your face in front of other people. Exactly. Yeah, Crazy. yeah. And it got really, really bad. Um, so then I was put back in the cell after the interview and they said, look, we'll, we'll only be 10 minutes. We'll bail you out and the officer will take you home yeah. because I said, I can't get home. I've got no phone. I don't know my husband's phone number Yeah. and all this. So, and my mum is in, you know, she's in her seventies. I can't just, you know, expect her to come and pick me up and so forth. So he did offer, offer, um, offer to take me, which was really good of them. Yeah. No, and, um, really. I mean, they, they had dragged yeah. you out. They jolly well should have done, shouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah least they could do really yeah. and um then they put me back in the cell but it started going on another hour and I was I got really really upset because I started panicking then because I was like oh my god I'm stuck in here again I'm stuck in here again and um then I got home my husband was beside himself because he called the station yeah um and they said we can't talk to you about someone in custody and that was it. So my husband had no idea I'd be that long. I had no idea I'd be that long. My children had no idea I'd be that long. Well, no, no doubt your husband would say, well, mum, we'll be back in an hour or two. Yeah. Yeah. And then and my the son, my son would, yeah, my son breastfeeds, or used to breastfeed to sleep. He doesn't breastfeed anymore, thankfully. And um, he didn't have his money. So did that, did it end at that point or did it end, drag off later, the breastfeeding? Oh, that, no, it, it dragged on. Like, he, he, I think it was, like, it was when he, turned three so it's last yes. year we we uh we weaned him off i'm so envious i wanted my daughter to do that but she wouldn't <laughs> oh mine so, it, it was it was a bit of a fight <laughs> we got there in the end um but yeah he, he it was hard to get him to sleep my husband found it really difficult to get him yeah, to sleep because he was yeah. used to being yeah, and 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah so um i came home and my husband said you know do you want a glass of wine and i said no I, i'm in such a state that even wine, which is, you know, my one it. thing, I cannot, cannot even look at it, can't bear to look at it. And I was shaking and I was just really, 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 really upset. And my husband's never traumatized seen Traumatised is the word you're Yeah, yeah traumatised because my, you know, my husband knows that I'm a, 
feisty gobshite and even he was like bloody hell yeah it must be bad it's got to isn't it you yeah. know and um yeah so I went to bed I cuddled went up and cuddled with my son because we co-slept at the time so I went up and cuddled him and managed to breastfeed and relieve the build up and um the next day it just and I'd seen before I'd even been released from the cell um the police contacted Hayden and Hayden had posted about it on Twitter whilst I was still in a police cell. So they, they, been... they wouldn't tell your own husband what was going on. No. But they told, what did they tell Hayden then that they'd arrested you? That I'd, that I'd been arrested and I was. Just uh, can't believe that interviewed. they wouldn't tell your husband what the situation was and they told Hayden. Mm. That's amazing. Well, the victim, apparently. But um, yeah. yeah, it was it was tough. And the following month, um, I sort of developed agoraphobia. Uh, I developed unhealthy coping mechanisms, which saw me pile on even more weight than I was already fat. Yeah. I was just oh, huge. And um, obviously, uh, unhealthy drinking habits, unhealthy yeah. eating habits. I, you know, I couldn't answer my door. Uh, you know, I panic the yeah. minute I hear a car pull up. Yeah. Um, if a if a police car was just going doing the rounds, I'd go into a full scale meltdown. Um, and obviously that affected my kids that affected my marriage yeah and then we had a knock on the door I got told oh yeah um, Hayden had emailed me to say that they were applying for an injunction I couldn't go to the injunction because I had no just, money. just one or two questions mm -hmm. have popped up before we move on to yeah. that stage mm -hmm. um, Anna has asked did you tell the police that you were breastfeeding yes yeah well you told them mm-hmm yeah, yeah. Just I told them. I didn't. told them I'm a breastfeeding mother. At oh, what stage did you tell them? Uh, during the the booking in. Because oh, right. They asked if I was on. They asked if I was on medication and stuff like that, and it was just the sort of personal questions I asked you. And I said, you know, I uh, breastfeed my son. Uh, and that, yeah. So they knew. That that raises a whole load of questions, doesn't it? About you know, yeah. so many other breastfeeding mothers. I mean, we all, those of us who breastfed, we know how really mm. painful it is when you can't get, you yeah. know, get the milk out of your breast. People think, yeah. oh, it's a mild discomfort. It's not, it's not. People have got no ideas about women's bodies. Remember that was that guy tweeted recently, oh, if you're on your period, can't you hold it in? He didn't yeah. realise you have no control over this, you know, yeah. a level of ignorance. And in terms of police, it's coming, training, yeah. they should really be trained about women's bodies. They really, really Yeah, should. no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So is, yeah. moving on then. So. You were traumatised, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah, so I was I was told that uh, Hayden was applying for an injunction and that it would be held on this day at, at here at the Royal Courts of Justice, but I couldn't go because I developed agoraphobia. Yeah. I had young children. Yeah. I didn't have childcare. Which date are we at? Where have we got to now in time? It was the 10th of December. Oh, right. So it's only a few days so later. Yeah, it's yeah, like two, week, so later. Two, two, yeah, two weeks later. Um, so we obviously I couldn't go, and it was granted. And then that, that, so that in, was in an ideal that, world, you'd have been there and you'd have put your case, and it might not have been in good. Absolutely, but because yeah. Of, in a way, the way you'd been treated, yeah, yeah, you were not well enough to go. So you were mm. they they not only treated yeah. you horrendously on the day, but they almost prevented you from turning up mm. to put your side of the case. And Hayden yeah, then got you absolutely. completely silenced. So from then you really yeah. were a hidden voice. And this is why we've seen no press coverage of Kate. You won't have read an no. article anywhere. Um, yeah. You might have read a, a brief court report saying this happened in mm. court and this was the result. But Kate has been completely silenced and you know under the mm. threat of this injunction and unable to talk yeah. about any of this. And the, and the court have been complicit in that as well. And the court have been complicit in that, mm. exactly so. So all this stuff they took on your phone and your uh, laptop, did they copy that to you? Did did they tell you what was wrong with it? They didn't even they didn't even take anything. They didn't even take it. No, it was they encrypted. didn't even look. So what did they make their judgment on then? What Hayden gave them. They just listened to Hayden and they didn't look at the, your the actual. So they had your passwords and everything. They made all that fuss about taking all your stuff, and they never. Yeah, looked they didn't at even look at it. No. That is amazing. Mm. Did you ever complain about how the police had treated you? Yeah. And they said on the balance of probabilities, um, the police were right. Where, at what stage did you complain? 
I complained soon after. I, I complained, yeah. didn't I? It was January or February I complained. Yeah. And um, I'd said about the period products. Yeah. And the were, even though it wasn't on the system, they hadn't put that it had been given to me on the system, but they had ticked that I needed it. So they had recorded the fact on their own system that you needed yeah, it. Yeah, I needed it. But they're saying, oh, well, the balance of probabilities, we did give it to you. And that's crazy. Serious, and we all know yeah. when you're on your period and you haven't got proper protection, you're worried about being bleeding through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oh, also, so, there, was blood, there was blood on the bed and, the, you know, and oh, I was cleaning that up. God. I was cleaning that up. Yeah. And I didn't want to, you know, like, no, you're embarrassed. make sure anyone else was going to be sitting on it. So I was like cleaning oh. it up and I was and sobbing, like, When you're oh, in a situation oh. like that and you're so embarrassed. And, yeah. you know, and tra- you, you can't really concentrate on anything else. No, 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 no. That's horrendous. No. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, yeah, real horrible. So what stage, people are asking in the chat, you know, did you get the solicitor? At what stage, presumably it was, at what stage did you get legal advice yourself, you know, formally? Um, well, formally, I got legal advice on the, I got contacted by a feminist lawyer who's, oh, yeah. whose husband, um, was a solicitor, criminal solicitor. So she gave me his details and said, look, we, we were appalled by what's happened. This was in February yeah. when the story, after the story was broken. Um, and I got I got given a number, so I called and he was just magnificent. He was really, you know, brilliant. Can we have the person's name? Paul. Uh, Paul, is it the same Paul Benson. that did Kira's case? No, Paul Benson. He's Paul a, Benson. Yeah, a criminal solicitor. He was... He was, he was brilliant. He was so helpful. He put me at ease, you know, and he would answer all the questions I had. Um, so I then obviously, I went back on Twitter, but I couldn't go back. Oh, I went, I was on Twitter under Busted Wench till February. And when that story broke, which I was accused of being behind, um, and uh, being behind along with Graham Linehan. Yeah. I'm, you know, the same guy I really don't like. So yeah. Well, we're, we're on, not, well, we're we're on not Graham Linehan. Somebody's somebody said in the chat that um, somebody from Fair Cop grasped your. your oh, yes, Har- Harry. Yeah, Harry Miller. Harry yeah, Miller. Yeah. yeah, who's the same one? We had Ali B on as a webinar. He's the same one that you know took yeah. her lyric and kept promising to acknowledge her, but yeah, never yeah. ever finally did, even though yeah. they've been talking about it. Yeah, the, the one the one who managed to clear his name, but no one else's. Yes. Yeah. That one, yes. Oh, Fair Cop. Okay. And Graham Linhan's also it. I have to say, I'm in Fair Cop. You know, they do a lot of good work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not fair that, that you know, these things should go unremarked. No. No. So no. I think we need to yeah. make a note of that. Yes. And sometimes, it's, you know, there can be boys clubs that you see and there can be boys clubs that you don't see. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, you, you can tell the measure of a man when a woman says no. Yes. And their reaction. So, yes. you know, that's that's how it works with certain people. Yes. Um, but yes, he. Uh, I, it was in February when the story broke. I got mass reported by a lot of the trans rights activists. Right. So then my busted went account, which I'd had for ten years, yeah. was banned and was not allowed to come back at all. Right. So I um, set up another Twitter account. Yeah. This was the one was called. She said, looking at her notes, what's this one called? Oh, it was a Mandy McGirldick one. Mandy McGirldick, yes. Because <laughs> I thought it was funny, and it is funny. It is. So it's like that boaty McBoat face, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Which is why That's I what it like, is. Ah. Ask a and stupid I, question. You know, yeah, exactly. And I do it to my, you know, I'll call him Messy McMess face or whatever. Yeah, you know, that's cool. what I do. That's yeah. I've always, you know, my my husband just laughs because he he knows exactly the type of crap I come up with. So, um, yeah. So I was I was posting on that, and I, in March. Uh, of 2019, Miranda Yardley case was going on. Yeah. The, um, Do you want to just oh, say briefly what that was? Because not everyone will know. Yeah, so Helen Islan, the the woman whose child is trans, and she she is a prevalent woman. Um, she was she went for Miranda, I think. Yeah, she went yeah. for Miranda about harassment even though she'd posted pictures of her child online. Um, Which is not, I have to say, I don't think it's a good idea to 
post pictures of your children online. I really don't. Well, certainly, certainly, if you don't want anyone else bloody looking at them, which is a bit, you know, well, also, it's a consent a, issue. A That's beyond the consent, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. good point. Um, but, yes, and um, so, so you were I saw that. For... Yeah, I was. I was watching the, you know, like a, the the hashtag. Yeah. That was going on Twitter, and I saw um, Hayden commenting on it, and I thought, oh, this would be interesting. So I asked Hayden. Hayden didn't know it was me. I don't think. Um, but I asked Hayden their thoughts on it, and had a perfectly reasonable, polite. Uh, if not, you know, questioning yeah. thread with with yeah. Hayden, uh, which the judge, you know, said in the case of the original trial was that, you know, my name, I'd set up that account with that name in order to humiliate and demean yeah. Hayden, Mind reader, which is, judge. Mind reader. you know, which is hilarious. Um, and Especially when they hadn't looked at the evidence to see if you, you know. No. And they haven't even looked on Twitter to see how much girl dick is swinging about. You know, there's loads. So that's what it was. It was because it's this ludicrous idea that a girl could have a dick. Yeah. So, and then call it girl dick. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the judge uh, assumed that's my intent, which it wasn't. My no. intent was to be funny. Yeah. Um, so, yes, we had a pleasant conversation and that was that. Never contacted the person again because you know, not interested. I just wanted to find out their view and how they might feel a bit worried about their case. And um, Hayden kept going on about this injunction, this first of its kind injunction against misgendering, this and the other. And I, the, the, the real question I ask is, but how would you know it's the first of its kind? Because injun the point of injunctions is that they're like, you know, they're to shut people up. Yeah, I said you were clever. I said you were. Yeah. See things, be like everyone else. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it was uh, it was just that sort of conversation about that, and um, that was it. There was about five or six tweets. Yeah. And that was that was that. And then um, I changed the name on that account to Myrtle Moans, I think it was. That was like in April May sometime, and um, that was when I was outed to. Um, Hayden and then I was contacted by the police again to say like like, yeah like, yeah so I was outed yeah. to Hayden and that, that led to the police contacting me again to uh bring me in for another interview yeah so and they treated you better this time did they? they they did yeah they certainly did and then I had my solicitor with me or the solicitor representation with me and we just gave a no comment yeah uh interview but he had to he had to go through like Mandy McGirldick said this and Mandy McGirldick said that. <laughs> and I was just like, oh God, I can't laugh. But I was sort of just smirking uncontrollably. And um, yeah, so they they interviewed me and then I went home. And it was a very quick, you know, easy, much better uh experience. And then um it was in September, so a few months later, I kept chasing them, I kept saying, yeah. look. Can this be sorted out? Because I need I need to go to work now, and I've got my masters. I've got, I'm finishing up my masters, and I need to get work. Yeah. You know, and I can't I can't get work if I don't know if I've got a criminal record or not. Yeah. They were like, yeah, well, we'll get round to it. We'll get round to it. And um, it was in September that I got a phone call from the police officer who said, "Can I come round? Because we're going to charge you." I said, do you need to come round to my house? Can you not just send it in the post like normal? And he said, no, we'll, we'll come round. So the PC Rob came round and hand delivered the charge, um, which obviously set off a traumatic uh, reaction. Yeah, reaction. Uh, yeah triggered, yeah. My, my sister had to come round and stand with me when he came into my house because I didn't want him in my house. No, no. I had to ring, ring my mum. My mum was looked after my son. Um, she took him upstairs and my mum had to cuddle me because I was a shaking mess. Yeah. She's not seen me like that. Right. And I'm um, sure you didn't want to see you like that too. No, no. And my mum, you know, I'm very much like my mum. My mum is a stoical. Yeah. You know, you, you don't see my mum hurt. And when you do see her, it like proper breaks you know, your heart. Hurt. Yeah, yeah, like, oh. And um, so it was like that really. And, and he came around, hand delivered it. 
and I was being charged. Um, it was it was it was a, a weird charge. I can't even remember what the charge was, but it wasn't the charge that eventually went to court. Yeah. So they kept they kept changing this charge. So on this, I had to then go to court to plead um, two days before my dissertation was due in. God. So that was hard work. And uh, obviously my grades suffered massively. Yeah. You could see the drop in grades um, across my timeline from December oh, sure. yeah. through to September. And, um, you know, I was, I was all ready to get a, you know, distinction and so forth, but I didn't. So, my, yeah, I didn't get as good a masters as i'd hoped but celebrate you got it there we go and um yeah so i had to go and plead but the day we went to court in it was stevenage magistrates yeah they spoke to my barrister my barrister then Who's came back spoke to... i need to get her name right because i don't want to I, i'll oh. double i'll have to double check okay because I've got the same name and it keeps popping up and it's the wrong name. <laughs> but um, a Diana, Diane Wilson. Right, okay. That's it. I just wanted to make sure that it is, I think it's Di Diane, Diane, I can't. Um, I've just watched The Crown, so I think that's me missing about the <laughs> Diane, Diane. Um, you know, there's so, a yes. in the story, you don't need to fictionalise it. <laughs> Someone's just asking, um, is that the Paul Benson of McCarity's solicitors? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Fantastic bloke, fantastic yeah. bloke. Highly recommend him if you're ever in trouble. And um, so, yes, so I got, went up to court. They pulled my barrister and said, look, we're going to do the, the charge is different from the one that we originally start, you know, gave in the letter. She said, OK, what is it now? And they mentioned something. She came back, told me. Ten minutes later, they brought her back in and said, oh, no, actually, we're charging her with this. Changed it again after they'd written yeah. to you. Twice. they changed it twice on the day of the plea oh my god so you couldn't yeah. really be said to have been able to prepare for that no so but i was always going to play you know plead not guilty because yeah. i uh, absolutely wasn't guilty you done anything, they were saying. Yeah. no just been annoying and so yeah they they decided to change it to section 127 and um so what is what is just for us all who, who are not lawyers and a bit lost what did they actually is it as i thought misgendering and harassing online it was um harassment yeah basically um and being annoying that was it that is the charge it was like you're being annoying literally and, in those words yeah, <laughs> yeah with annoyance cause annoyance mm, <laughs> I was like, annoying. well, so you've done wrong. something that a man doesn't like well well, yeah. well. don't do yeah. that girls come on remember we've all got remember. to remember be kind. And um, I remember so, the yes. judge saying that. I, my jaw dropped. Yeah. I know, yeah. That judge yeah. Was we else. teach, yeah, well, she was, yeah. We teach our children to be kind. In fact, I don't teach my children. <laughs> I no. teach my children to, you know, be well, themselves. Be a, yeah, be a good person, but don't be a mug either, you know. So it's, um, yeah, so that it changed and I pleaded not guilty, obviously. And, mm -hmm. um, Hayden, so let's just Hayden had turned up at the court as well. Hayden turned up at their court for that, but you're not allowed to go in as a as the yeah. the uh, victim of a crime. You're not allowed to go into the plea hearings or the hearing. You know, so he's allowed um, to be in there. But, but no, so he so Hayden wasn't allowed to go into the courtroom. I was obviously because I was pleading. But Hayden had turned up to the courthouse for some reason. I don't know. So he, his so, tactics are horrendous, aren't they? I mean, all this reporting and the police are colluding with yeah. him. I would say the police are colluding with him to harass you. That's what's coming across to me. Yes. And the fact that he's darvoing, he's doing all this stuff himself, but he's accusing you of it and getting the police on his side. If yeah. anyone ever looked at what he had done, um, it would be very, very different. And he'd find it very hard to plead not guilty, I would say. And you're left with having to try and fund a defence, find yeah. lawyers, we all know how tough it is to do a degree and bring up kids anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's a, a tough call to have anything big in your life and bring up a family. And now you've got this huge, and, and then you're traumatised, so you're not able to cope so well with any of it. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then it, I, I just can't believe that the poor preparation that's gone into this on, on all the public bodies and every single, but obviously mm -hmm. there are an individual policemen who see it and comment saying this is ridiculous. Yeah. But 
the whole of the court system and the whole of the mm -hmm. police have been so out of line. And we know that Anne Sinnott is taking a court a case saying that the yeah. Crown Prosecution Service should not be trained by Stonewall. No, Someone's absolutely. just put in the chat that yeah. um, you know, police have been trained by gendered intelligence. We at yeah. Object got a gendered intelligence course, design course taken down yeah. from the Open University and from future um, government website because it mm -hmm. was scientifically inaccurate. Um, yeah. No one's, no, these things are being accepted uncritically. We this policy capture, this is all the background to the transgender issue. And you unfortunately caught the sharp end of it in so many, many different ways. And <laughs> I can only say again, you know, we've talked before, but how sorry I am that, you know, ha this has happened to you. I, I think, you know, this is one of these things that you just make sure, you know, you either makes or breaks you really. And it's proven once again that, you know, it's going to take more than that. Well, good for you, because sometimes people might say that somebody in, in, in a village in Hertfordshire raising a family was not going to be the shero that stepped up and challenged the might of transgenderism. But they can't say that. No. So thank you for doing for being so strong. We right. know it wasn't easy. Yeah, that's all right. So we were in, is this the court case when you were there for three days? Yeah, so yes. we, so I pleaded um, not guilty on the and the court, day. yeah, uh, on the, on, in September, because you have to plead before it goes to trial. Yeah. So then the trial was set for the 6th and 7th of February, the following yeah. year, obviously last year. And um, right. so we, we got to that point. I must say, point out that Hayden had come to drop, hand deliver the uh, injunction in December, 2018. Himself? So that, well, that, they didn't get out the car. They got their mate to come out the car, yeah. which was a real shame because I would have happily face down yeah, but c'est la vie c'est la vie um so yes I, I wanted to add that for someone who's scared they don't off put themselves about yeah very scared yeah too scared to actually face up to anybody but not too scared to intimidate any exactly. any gender critical woman he goes anywhere near exactly um so yes we get to february obviously that that christmas is ruined as well so that's two christmases i've had with my family that have been a bit crap because i'm terrified of what's happening yeah. Um, just, just sorry to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. this is about seven or eight tweets over nine months. This is not like they were constantly. Yeah, chatting. Like it was no. Yeah, it was. A, it was. A, it literally was. I think it was about twelve tweets in all oh, seven or eight that they like, weren't deemed anything offensive at all. Yeah. And a it's few. A very, of the very tweets, small amount of, of whatever yeah, it was. A few of the tweets that that, that um, Hayden wasn't tagged into, so Hayden would have not have had a clue. That anything was about them unless yeah. they were stalking the timeline and i'd i'd blocked hayden um but hayden had obviously worked around that block by having a sock account possibly or uh, maybe um going on the incognito mode i don't know but um so they they had worked around the block i'd put in place yeah so uh yes that um we got to february and it was, you know, terrifying going into court. Yeah. I mean, I'd gone to court once before, obviously in the 90s, but it was nicking money from Sainsbury's. I mean, it was about 80 quid on it. And my mum and dad, my dad being a vicar and my mum being an honest sort, had said, you know, be speak the truth, tell them the truth. Whereas I could have just said no and that nothing would have happened. But, it, you know, it happened. And... Um, so yes, I had to go to court, and it was the same courthouse. I had to go to court in the nineties. Gosh, <laughs> the same room. Took you, oh was, my God, the yeah. same room, the same courthouse. <laughs> wow. Well, in the in, on the on the on the judgment day, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, bloody hell. God. So yeah, that was uh, interesting. Well, you know, yeah, women so have got like, to be perfect. You mustn't have a mm -hmm. single single flaw in your character, otherwise you're a um, bad woman, and no one would yeah, ever listen to. I'm a crap one. So yeah. yeah, we um, so I had to do obviously the first day was Hayden doing yeah. um on the stand and, very loud uh, and very forceful that was hilarious and um so then the next you day had I a lot of feminist support didn't you it yeah loads yeah yeah i had so much it was really really good it yeah. was really we, it was lovely. The first day. we were there on the other yeah it was really lovely to see and it was really heartening to know that i had so much support and everyone was so lovely and yeah, it's really really lovely and proper built me up a bit you know it helped you were really still through. under an injunction so you couldn't really yeah no couldn't come no, yeah. you know, i remember wondering oh i didn't really understand at the time i'm thinking oh you yeah. know is kate gonna come and say hello to us all 
and um, yeah. somebody said, oh, no, she can't. You know, I didn't really, mm. but actually, you were so gagged, weren't you? Plus, I, you know, I'm, I'm as, you know, as much as I am a gobshite, I'm quite shy uh, in coming toward people, so I tend not to, unless I've had a skinful. You know, and I'll you could have been under a little bit of pressure, let's just face it. Yeah, 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 I was like really, a little, oh, a little bit freaked out. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had to, then the next day I had to stand up and give my uh, side, yeah. which was, yeah, I mean, that was, it was, it, it was a real shock because I, for the whole time, I thought there's no way this will get further than, you know, this is just ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous thing on the planet. There's no way I could get in trouble for this. This is insane. And so I'd already booked a um, interview, a job interview for the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, you know, you're guilty. So, so so I had to cancel the job interview. Did you get to go for the interview? No. Because you need a clean DBS. Yeah, clean and record. I wouldn't have one. Yeah. So and let's I face had to it. Up. And that was embarrassing. Jobs in psychology are not going to be that easy to come by in the world. <laughs> no, and it was yeah, and having to tell people, you know, especially like forensic psychology. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm just in court because of you know this that, and the yeah. other. <laughs> I'm experiencing it hilariously. Right yeah, it was hilariously bad, but yeah, it was laugh. And um. Yeah, so then I got guilty. Yeah. That, Mar that judge was something else, wasn't she? That oh. Margaret Dodds. I, I really thought, I really liked it. She was like first, but, but, uh, an old, a, a sort of, one of these conservative yeah. old ladies that has, mm. I don't think she's ever been on social media. No, I don't no, think she's, she's ever, ever met a woman with a mind of her own. No, no. Um, she was amazing. She yeah. was so, uh, she, her, her, her lack of understanding showed yes. through even you know i'm sure in the written judgment it showed through even more but even in mm. court she 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 looked actually fearful and out of she looked like she just didn't get it and she was terrified yeah. because she knew she had to get it she yeah. clearly would not been trained and equipped to deal with anything like that case and when you read no. that the judges in these courts are being given a little booklet to read about twitter yeah that's it yeah they don't know that's yeah that's all they get you, you yeah. some things you have to experience they should have compulsory mm. Twitter for all judges, I think. So at least and that's what I think, yeah. That's why I think the, the appeal judges, certainly Warby, strikes me as someone who knows how Twitter works. Well, that's good. You know, and I mean, that's that was, and I think that, yeah, and that played into the, you know, being able to actually reasonably look at this and go. But they can't, they can't mental. judge pieces about something they know nothing about. They really can't. Exactly. Yeah, no, I couldn't. So I, I can't see why they should. But she took everything as how she assumed I did things that was her yes, opinion she, she of what I did she, she just assumed yeah. all your, and she believed yeah. on face value everything that Hayden said yeah and so you um, ended up with a criminal despite yeah yeah a thousand pound fine yeah and a village full of people gossiping because in a small world well, everywhere everywhere everyone's going to be gossiping about this aren't they but in a village yeah. you haven't really got far to go have you there's no, there's, you can't oh, I love a gossip <laughs> mates, yeah no I like a gossip myself so yeah. I, I, you know and I, I've always been in in the village uh, after this you know the story broke the first time lots of people would discuss it I'd just go up to them and say you know I'm happy to answer any questions if you'd like yeah. and I, you know I've always been and they couldn't like the people I know in the village and walk you know do the school run and stuff they they're just like I can't you know you're so like not how you're being portrayed yeah you know you're you know I don't see you as like this evil bigger you know I'm like no it's because I'm not I'm just yeah. you know just believe in sex-based rights yeah. <laughs> and ooh, ooh, sex -based rights. we like those yeah uh, and uh yeah so I've, I'm, I managed to peak you know I think I pretty much peaked the whole of the village so Fingers crossed. That's good. To know. Everyone, but how yeah. things for you personally over those next few weeks? Must have been difficult. Yeah, it was. It was. It was such a shock, and it. It was. I just never thought it would really. I would get a guilty. No. Guilty plea, and then I had obviously, I had uh, Fillmore write a blog uh, that sort of blamed me for it, and that really hurt because I was like, oh, so I don't need that right now, and um. Then you know you just had How all the. Did you make out that you were to blame then? Because I followed an account she didn't like, so. Oh. But um, it was I had I saw quite a bit of that, and that was really hurtful. You know the sort of well she's rude, she should shut up then. And I was thinking that's coming from women, like the amount of you know, hostility that we get. Oh my god, yeah, Have and it really not big going to fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like say what if I'm rude. Yeah, mm, you're allowed to be off. rude. <laughs> <laughs> I will be as rude, and I'm going to be even ruder now to you because you've hurt my feelings. But anyway, 
I sort of grew a thick skin eventually and it got thicker as time went on because I, you know, I sat there and I thought, actually, this is, this is really important. This is a lot more important than I thought it was. Yeah, this is bigger than I thought, yeah. Yeah, massive. And it really, it, I didn't realise when I read the appeal judgment and I thought, bloody hell, that, you know, this is a lot bigger than just a little spat. You know, this, yeah. this, is, this has changed law it's, it's secured in law that you have the right to expression online you absolutely have that right yeah and yeah so it's a big like wow that's amazing it's bigger than i ever thought it could be and i'm glad but i'm glad it's, it's helped people you know that's it in my oh, experience not, hopefully it will it. never ever happen again yeah so you thought you would you would win in the original case yeah were you, by the time it came to the appeal, were you confident still at that stage? Or did you think, my God, no. this has gone so out of hand, it could go, yeah. could go against I, I, me? I really, yeah, I, I, at that point, I'd like drop to, oh, you know, God, if this doesn't go well, this is terrible, you know, and, and I'm not sure it is going to go well because I never thought I'd be guilty in the first place. So, no. you know, what are the chances of me getting to winning that? But so I, I didn't tell anyone about the appeal. Right. Yeah. I remember you saying, yeah. I didn't tell my husband, I didn't tell anyone. I kept to it to myself. <laughs> and uh, the day came round and I'd said, well, I didn't have the money to travel to London on that day, plus obviously COVID and things like that. And so, and I said to my solicitor, you know, will it look bad if I don't go? And he said, no, they've already made the judgment. This is just them yeah, handing it down. It, so yeah. it's, not, it's not a problem. Yeah. So I sat there and waited on the day. And it was- and how did you hear? I heard via email, Paul sent email me an email. Yeah, yeah, he said, he sent me an email and said, you're free, we've won. And I was like, oh my God. And I called my husband, so I was crying on the phone. And he was like, you all right, what's happened? Oh my God, what's happened to the kids? I was like, nothing, nothing, nothing the appeal, it's one. He was like, what? What are you talking you didn't about? Tell me. <laughs> yeah. So then I had to tell everyone. Um, yeah. But it was, oh, it was um, a magnificent feeling. But I mean, it was just after I got home from the school run that I got the email. Yeah. Um, so I'd sat and watched really crappy Netflix movies, Christmas Shut movies. Yourself. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. God, what's this? So yeah, it was. Um, but it was. It was. It just felt absolutely amazing. I yeah. thought, wow, you know, I am. I, I haven't got a conviction. That's it. I'm free. Clear. Have you My had your thousand pounds back? Um, it's in the post. Oh, it's in the process at the moment. Check is in the post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, they like it quickly, but they never like to give it back quickly. So, uh, no, what, yeah, what happened about the injunction? Has the injunction, yeah, did, was that gone? gone. Because um, the claim had been stayed. Uh, Hayden had stayed the claim, which means, you know, you still you stop the claim, basically. But it's still in, it's still live. Yeah. And anyone can pick it up at any time. So, um, but Warby wasn't happy with that. Yeah. And so Warby... This is the appeal judge, Judge Warby. Yeah, he wrote a, a, an order that this be reopened and this be settled yeah. as soon as possible and sorted as soon as possible. And uh, Hayden, to, to Hayden's credit, had apparently sent an email on the 11th of December to me, but that didn't come into my email box for some reason. Okay. So I, I, I'd assumed that I was still being sued and still had the injunction. Right, so you didn't um, know that you could speak out about no, it? No, no, I hadn't known by that point. That I would, you know, that uh, Hayden was willing to just drop it. So yeah. I, um, I wrote something on Twitter, and then Hayden wrote saying this was a, this was something I wasn't being honest or I wasn't being something. And uh, so I tweeted Hayden and said, "Sorry, could you, could you send me the email again because I've not yeah. received email. And I haven't." Has it gone into your spam or something? No, no, I still looked. I still couldn't find it. But uh -huh. it, it, it had been sent. It had been sent. Um, yeah. So credit where credit's due. So then we uh, we sorted it out there, there and then. I deleted the tweet and you know sorted it out from there and then. I'm free. Good. Well, congratulations thank and thank you so much for you. standing up because we all benefit from what yeah. you did, you know. And you were on your I own hope so, there. Yeah. Jumped in. You would have had a lot more support if you'd been able to speak out about it. Yeah, but yeah, people, that was it. Was very frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Very frustrating. No one could really. Um, no, you know. no. And this is why it's you know. That, yeah, I had have very you done any press it. interviews before now since the that was no. lifted. No, I, I think we're basically no. the first person to bring it out into the air, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah hopefully, yeah. many other people will. Um, 
because as you said, and I've written this down in quotations, this is bigger than I thought. You know, yeah. this is absolutely, this is, you know, up there with the big cases. And yeah, yeah, yeah. we know that there are a number of cases going on, you know, um, there's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. as we said, with Stonewall and the CPS. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What would you say, I mean, I'm sure you keep an eye on them all, what would you say is the biggest fight we've got on our hands at the moment, the most important case? I think the Kira Bell case for me, uh, because this is, this is children. They're exactly. children. Children are more vulnerable. There's a lot of vulnerable Absolutely. people being preyed on, but children Absolutely. are more vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and their lives are being taken away, their future of just ex exploring who they are and who they become and who they become is being taken away. And it, yes. that genuinely makes me so sad because I know as a, as a teenager, you know, I, I could I can relate to anyone who would feel dysphoric. I'm a fat woman. Yeah. I, every day I'm feeling dysphoric in some way. You know, I'm not accepted by society because, you know, I'm viewed as this, that and the other. I get it. I get that fight and I get yeah. it all the time. And I know what it's like to be a teenager. And I know yeah. what it's like. Uh, it's horrible. You know, I was a self-harmer. I tried to commit suicide. I was a terrible teenager. But and I get it. And I get I get you want to escape being a woman. Yes, get it. yes. I want to escape being a woman still. And there are sometimes. many different, uh, different ways that God. people look at. Yeah. They eat too little. But, they eat yeah. too much. They cut yeah. themselves. They try exactly. and pretend they're something else. Exactly. You yeah. want to get out of it, but you can't get out of it. No. And we need to support each and every one of you to yeah. grow into who you're going to be. Absolutely. And I know there's a lot of parents that want to do that and don't necessarily yeah. know yeah, how have to the do means. That yeah, it's... exactly. And have the means to, and the support and the, the, the publicity. This, this case is so important in, in highlighting, you know, the medics aren't always right. They're not always no, there's, there's, there's a, trustworthy. I read a lovely phrase for, by Janice Raymond about mm. the, 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 the uh, um, circles of collusion and medics are making a fortune out of this. They're being wooed by the drug yeah. companies. Yeah. All yeah. the surgeons are getting to try out all their techniques that yeah. they can make loads of money out privately. You know, the circles mm. of collusion stretch a very, very, very long way with a lot of feminist issues, with the transgender yeah. issue they do, yeah, yeah. and also with surrogacy. You know, oh, I'm a yes. nice person. I, I yes. want that nice gay man to have a child. I won't think about yes. all the bad things. It's very easy to play this no. nice person, and we really all it need is. to yeah, not, yeah. not do that. No. Yeah, Engage brain being, before yeah. opening mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Just like it's okay. Some, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd just like to read some comments in the chat, because you're getting a lot of... Um, of support here you know thank you so much for going through with it thank you for That's your right. bravery <laughs> somebody said um what can we do to stop this happening to anybody else which is a good question mm. uh, there's a class issue here you know there's a there's a lot of of people you know a lot of middle class feminists mm -hmm. thinking maybe an ordinary person in Hertfordshire you know should not be supported there's a battle of ideas that tends to go on amongst academic circles and things like that and yes. ordinary people can easily get missed out of that yeah I'd like I'd like to say quickly like a big yes. up to, like huge support to Posey you yes. know keep fucking doing what you're doing fuck the rest of them a lot of people on. don't like the fact that a woman whose main occupation in life is looking yeah. after her family yeah in a nice suburban yeah. home you can stand up yeah and can speak up for a lot of us absolutely, absolutely. Yes. keep yeah. doing it it's, there's, there's the some people have the wrong Never kind of stop. feminist and the right kind of feminist yeah yeah yes how would you absolutely. assess your loss of income kate someone's made a good point about loss of income. yeah well i mean i've just i've i've had no income now yeah. since uh, since i went into maternity uh obviously but i was due to start work in september 2018 uh 2019 um and i had a job lined up and i was ready to start work but you would have again, been in your chosen line of your chosen career yeah it was a Psych mental health, psychology type yeah, job, yeah yeah mental health support worker in a, in yeah. a um a facility and i couldn't because the day i was due to start that job i was hand delivered to charge and again it's a role you have every three months your dbs is updated in this yeah. job because obviously they have yeah. to keep people safe and absolutely and so i couldn't have the job yeah and that was it that that really was a gut punch so yeah it's been yeah. Uh, you know i've missed two years worth of work really yeah. and that's that's, a, that's that's probably a lifetime career setback yeah it? yeah hugely yeah. Yeah. yeah are you going to sue the police somebody's asking we were saying we, we will I'm, pay your legal fees <laughs> i'm looking to i've started the ball rolling on uh trying to sue the cps i'm hoping they're going to look into um wrongful 
conviction and yeah. obviously I've got to keep trying you know I'm not going to lie down and let them well good do this because what one of the things that came out at the appeal that I noticed was that the mm. the judge they yeah. people hadn't looked at the evidence yeah. they just hadn't they'd accepted everything at face value because this man yeah. said he was transgender and this, um, this person this person has a long long criminal history of dishonesty yet you just yes absolutely blindly believed everything it yes was, it, that's what blew me away I thought bloody hell like you're colluding with this person exactly. in order to punish me yeah yeah and that that blew me away because and, and obviously I was I, I had a lot of respect for the police and now I cannot stand them and I don't trust them at no. all and I'm no. so sad I'm so sad you took that away from me police you yeah. took my faith in you away completely and that is that really upsets me Yes, it is because you know we all rely on the police in certain circumstances, and yeah, you become a lot more yeah. cautious when you when you yeah. hear. Stories. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go near him. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. go near him. Yeah. yeah, somebody else is suggesting maybe we should sue Hayden. You know, for, for <laughs> look at all at all Hayden's activities. You know, they don't yeah. look very good at all. Well, I think I think the court is, uh, is on to that. Yeah. So good. we we can all we can all hope um, that something's on to that. And as Joni's just put there. Yeah. Uh, Hayden is suing Joni. Um, yeah. But Joni has been harassed horrifically. Yeah. And uh, I would happily support Joni in crowdfunding to yeah. rip a new well, arsehole. Absolutely. Yes. So would yeah. we. Yes. In fact, yeah. it would be nice to have Joni on the webinar to tell us a bit more about what's happening with her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lot of support, and it's really awful, the fact that you, this didn't come out, you know, you see articles in the press about all sorts of things, and you were not, you know, you were shut off from all that. Mm -hmm. And that needs to all come out now. So do please go away and tweet about all this and tell everybody, mm -hmm. not just the little news that Kate won on appeal, but all the awful things that happened to her. And Yeah, uh, really that, was, that be, was hard. Yeah, it's tough. And um, we hope that, have you had any, any counselling, any support to help you with the trauma reaction? No. Um... I'm not, uh, even though I study psychology, I'm still, I'm not convinced by counselling. Uh, and, uh, and finding I, a counsellor who would understand, yeah, would be yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I think even, I think what, what upsets me most about the current ideology is how many psychologists, yeah. people who I respect and would want to be, have yeah. bought into this Absolutely. and are, are telling children that they're born in the wrong body. Yeah. And it, 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 it blows me away and I, I cannot express the complete and utter disappointment I feel in yeah. those people where is your integrity and where is your you know where's your ethics where, where is it where what are you doing to children it's insane so yeah I, I'm still not a big uh, fan of counselling no no I, I, I take your point but I, I do think that sometimes when you've been through a big trauma as I have myself in the past yeah yeah you need some help to talk yeah, it to process it. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, process, process it. But I, I did have, um, I've got a, a very close knit group of feminist friends oh, who good. have supported me from day dot. You know, I've got my Grace O'Malley, and I've got, I won't say a real name, uh, and I've got, you know, Sweary Godmother. Oh yeah, Anna, we know, yeah. Yeah, she's close to me, and, and I've got, uh, again, I don't want to out her, but Alice, she knows who she is. So. Yeah. You know, and I've got Doctor M has has yeah. offered me so much support uh, for these yeah, last two years. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be anywhere without those lot. So and they they understand they understand the issue. The ones of them that I know. Yes. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So just a couple of final points. People are putting really mm -hmm. good stuff in the chat and the questions. Um, yeah. Alice and Jenna says Hayden calls himself flying lawyer, but she's heard there's no registration of him as a solicitor or a barrister. No. So they've got a law degree. So he's got a law like, degree. Yeah, so that's it's like, like me with my psychology yeah. degree saying I'm a psychologist. Exactly. Yeah, same as me. I'm a psychologist. I'm not. I'm, yeah, you know, but, you, but uh, to, 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 as I understand, it, to call one. myself a psychologist yeah. professionally, I would need to be registered with the British Psychological exactly. Society, which exactly. is a whole further professional accreditation. Yeah. So in yeah. the same way as I've got a psychology degree, but I'm not a psychologist, Hayden yeah. has got a law degree, which, which yeah. you know, yeah, it's very different. So thanks for pointing yeah. that out, Alison. Yeah, um, very good. Got a question about the flying monkeys comment. Oh yeah. Wanna go there? Yeah, I'm happy to tell yeah, I'm happy go to Go on then. Anything. Joey Bright says, Can you talk at all about the vague mix up confusing story about a crowdfunder and the idiot who dropped the flying monkeys comment? Do you know what that's oh, on about? I, is, I think that might be the 
I think like the Linehan, it was the mattress gate, I think they're talking about. Oh, the person that didn't have mattress a mattress and got given some money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was it was a crowdfunder was set up for Graham by someone, I think it was Ella Witchwood, who no one had heard of yeah. and hadn't been around the scene. So I was, you know, a bit whatever about it. And plus Graham's like got a lot of money. So I just thought it was a bit odd. And um I was in a group with Linehan, a WhatsApp group, and yeah. Linehan had asked me whether I'd like um how would my legal funds going this and the other and I said oh I'm not I'm not I don't want any because if Hayden finds out I've got any money it will become more intense to me yeah <laughs> so I'd said I don't you know I'm fine I'm just going to do this as a litigant in person and um then I got an email from GoFundMe or crowd whatever whichever crowdfunder it was using and uh, saying Deborah Hayton has been nominated to accept these funds to hand out. Please uh, send your identification. I thought, what's that? Is it so I, a trans person? Yeah, so I emailed, I, I WhatsApp the group that uh, we were all in, Debbie was in it as well, and said, is this email legit? You know, what's what's going on? Yeah. So then um, Hayton set up a new WhatsApp group with just me and Graham and Hayton in yeah. and said yes this is all legit you know I've been appointed treasurer and will be releasing funds and I said well this looks all looks a bit dodgy uh, I'm not comfortable can we be public about this because I don't want people yeah. who have given money to Graham to find it done to, to another course yeah of course exactly and I, all I wanted was I just genuinely wanted clarity yeah. and make sure because I cannot have shit on my nose when I'm going through a court criminal that you know no, I wanted no. everything above board yeah, I do absolutely. not want you know I don't want any skeletons coming out of any closet so I just wanted clarity and yeah. the person the other person who had been nominated for the funds was a woman called Karen, Karen McInnes now Karen McInnes had, had defrauded thousands out of people good-hearted lovely women. yeah I heard this yeah I heard so this. I pointed that out and said, oi, 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 this is, you know, dodgy as fuck. Yeah. I, I'm not happy about this. You do know this person has defrauded, out of, you know, and Karen was um, upset with me because I put a spanner in the works and she had said, well, I needed that because I need a new mattress. Yeah. Thought, well, that's where mattress gate came from. So um, it was... I was then obviously treated, I was obviously kicked out, you know, everyone hates me now. So, um, but you I'm alright with that. You don't hate me, Kate, we love you. But I don't, I don't mind, like, Graham Linen doesn't like me, couldn't give a shit. So it was, it was just a really messy situation, I, I was trying to get it across, and the more I was trying to get it across, the more things started bowling out of control, and I just yeah. thought, bloody hell, but then I couldn't speak about it, because again, I was an injunction, the and injunction. it was all just... Uh, yeah. so it, it just got really really messy and then obviously this year or last year he wrote a blog about me you know saying that I'd admitted that I was ungrateful or whatever but I wasn't yeah. really ungrateful I just wanted clarity yeah so you know clarity got and thankfully all of the funds went to Vancouver Rape Relief Centre well, and we know how much they needed that all, all of it all yeah needed. which is the, the thing I suggested I'd said said yeah. you know maybe we should give it to a, a you know something else yeah so I'm so glad that all went there so before Debbie or Graham jump up and go but but I have said it it went there how much was it so, about uh, about five grand I think I mean it's just you know it's worth having isn't it it's not a yeah, yeah. quid yeah mm -hmm. that, I've heard so many rumors about this so it's good to hear you yeah. know a, a sort of yeah and then obviously at any time I say anything about Graham Linnan or whoever I'll get the flying monkeys come out you know, you can't start, you can't, in, you can never speak out against people because the flying monkeys. But I'll keep speaking out against people because I don't give a shit about your fucking monkeys. <laughs> Good for you, Kate. Good for you, Kate. I'm so glad you did. Because if you hadn't spoken out in the first place, you know, we would still be thinking that it was illegal to misgender somebody. A lot yeah. of girls would be being told in school that they mustn't be rude. No one ever tells them yes. to be rude. If the boys yeah. rude, they say, oh, it's fine. It's just grow growing yeah, up. Yeah, boys, know. yeah. It's, I've always it's been just rude. the same old yeah. sexism that gets perpetuated. So Absolutely. we're very grateful to you. Very, yeah. very grateful. I, I um, love rude women. Rude yes. are the better.
Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Long may they be ruled. Yes. So we've got someone saying, yeah, Lindenham was responsible. He loves his true trans at the expense of women. And this issue with true trans is a big one. Mm. We've actually, to on the record, we don't actually subscribe to the true trans gospel. No, not on our website, As the Daily Mail picked up recently, an article mm. by Dr. Julia Long saying, actually, it's collusion, collusion. I love yeah. Julia, I love Dr. Yes. Julia Long. I we love, love Dr. Julia Long too. She is just a pocket fire rocket, what an amazing woman. And, and we are very lucky. She, yeah, we are. Oh, she's just fa- she's just fantastic. I love her. Yes. And and I used to think when I first started, when I first came into this arena, yeah. like, hell, you know, she's terrifying. She, <laughs> you know, oh my god, I'd never be like that. I'd, oh my god, she's being rude. But <laughs> I soon learned that no, she's just telling the fucking truth. That <laughs> she's doing it in a fantastic way. Absolutely. Good friend, absolutely long yeah. may she reign. <laughs> Someone her. said in the chat, rude, not prude, and we agree with that. Shout yeah. out to the bad fems. Yes. Um, yes. Long may they live. Yes. So welcome to the world of the bad fems. Congratulations yes. on joining the rude feminists who will not be nice people and will not shut yeah. up and will yeah. keep on going. And one of the nice things about being an unfunded organisation like Object yeah. is that we don't answer to anybody. And exactly. we can put on our website things that are a little bit further than all the nice organisations. A bit fruity. Yeah, slightly yeah. on the out- outlier thing and um mm. you know we take a great pleasure in, in putting out people that haven't had a chance to speak out or have been silenced and yeah, hearing no. exactly yeah. plenty of depth what they have to say yes, so I, I think at this point we'll we'll um end the webinar thank you so much all of you for joining in it's great yes. our next thank you, everyone. Is in two weeks time um and it'll be jennifer bielek and now a lot of you will know the name of jennifer bielek if not put into google jennifer bielek b-i-l-e-k and Federalist. Uh, Jennifer Bielek beat all the journalists and all the academic to investigate and reveal the huge philanthropic funding um, by gay and transgender men largely behind the gender industry um, and the links to transhumanism and the move to get us all to uh, disregard our sex bodies and spend a lot of money mm. trying to be somebody else. So um, check out Jennifer Bielek. Um, Vaishnavi Sundar, whose new film is out, has also said she will join us at some date oh, in the not too distant future. So we're looking forward to those. But Jennifer Bielek is joining us from the USA in two weeks' time on Valentine's Day, February the 14th, in the afternoon. Um, so obviously notification will come about that and we hope that you'll join us there. Jennifer Bielek is a very ordinary person who, again, has, I think she would also echo um, Kate's famous words, this is bigger than I thought. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much for coming. And um, yeah, Kate, thanks very much for joining us. Right, thank you very much for having me. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh. Okay, nice to see you again, Kate. Um, there was something we forgot to mention yesterday. I think it's important to mention the um, autism aspect. As we know, Mm -hmm. large proportions of um, girls presenting as transgender are on the autistic spectrum. And um, many experts have said that if they were not put on the trans path, they would go on to be perfectly happy, well-functioning lesbian members of society. They are same sex attractive people. We're in a society where that seems to be accepted for um, males now, but the acceptance for females comes a long way behind. Um, and I believe, Kate, you're on the autistic spectrum. What was your experience of it? Um, I grew up uh, feeling very, very um, removed from my fellow females. I didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't feel um, what they enjoyed. I enjoyed. I probably, you know, more so lent on uh, the male side of my personality, as it were. I. You know, I liked hanging out with men. I found them easier to to cope with and to understand. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't really get much um, female interaction until I was a you know a lot older. And maybe I did, maybe I'm, looking looking at that at that aspect mm-hmm. of childhood, maybe this shows how very very early girls get socialised into yeah. femininity. Um, and, yes, and you yes. know, not accepting all different types of girls as their mates and, and the differences. Yeah. And that can go on to lead to an intolerance, isn't it? I think we need to look at very early socialisation of children um, in this Absolutely, way. Absolutely, yeah. So you grew up feeling different and not belonging and feeling more in common with, with men because you could be a bit freer and franker. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I, could, I yeah. could speak my mind. I could, you know, say rude things. I could drink. I could do drugs. I could do whatever I wanted yeah. as a, you know, in male company because yeah. the the forced femininity of something wasn't. I just didn't feel comfortable in that pigeonhole. Yeah. So you were fully female, but not fully feminine. And, and actually, yeah, we, would, we would say that it's the femininity that's a problem, not you, yes. and not the female. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. And do, do, have you found any any pluses to being? Yes, autistic? I do think. Um, obviously, my daughter's autistic, and my son, uh, they suspect, is autistic as well. So we're fully <laughs> fully functioning autistic family. Um, yes, I do believe that it's um the next step in evolution really i think we're seeing more people's brains uh obviously creating new and exciting ways to view the world um how to cope with the world you know the world has been built on and around the idea that you, that's normal and when you don't meet that idea it, this world is very, very stressful. The yeah. loud noises, the, the lights, the the constant need to social. Like I'm not a social. I don't like socialising particularly, you know. And so, I feel this pressure constantly to socialise. Whereas, actually, funnily enough, this lockdown business is bloody brilliant because I'm like, great. I don't have to tell anyone. Next <laughs> I don't have to see anyone. I don't want anyone touching me, cuddling me, or anything. This is brilliant. So, yeah. you know, that, that is the world for me, and but this world doesn't work like that. And I think we we have to start seeing the change that we're all different. And actually yeah. some of us are wired a little bit differently and that's okay. And that's and okay. we should celebrate that's it. We should celebrate positive. our differences, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. And becoming also from a totally autistic family and having had troubles growing up. I'd also add that many autistic children, because of their obsessiveness and they, they don't need to go out constantly socialise, they become very knowledgeable, they become experts, and some of them become very, very high achievers and scientists and discoverers, both men and women. Absolutely. And we should be looking yeah. for those talents and nurturing them, mm. not saying, oh, Absolutely. you're not normal, put them box over there, you can't do yeah. anything, you're a problem. Absolutely yeah. agree. Oh, well, good for you, good for you. Keep on, mm -hmm. keep on being autistic, I say. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know you haven't got a choice, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of us I'll need to find ourselves as yeah. normal, don't we, up to a point, yeah, yes. we want to. But I think that what your experience has also raised some really, really big concerns about um, training in the public services, both of the police yes. and of the judiciary. Um, yes. We're thinking of, of submitting a freedom of information request about this because I'd like to know what training the police at all levels have about the needs of breastfeeding mothers and the needs of menstruating yeah. women. These are not things that you can turn on and off at will. They're necessary nope. for life to continue. There would be no babies if there was no menstruation, if there was no breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was shocked yesterday. I probably didn't say very much about it, but I was just shocked at how badly you've been treated. And to me, it, mm. it, given, given the, your circumstances, it amounts almost to a form of torture. That you were put through for seven hours in that police cell and i think that, that hasn't been taken seriously and it needs to be taken no. seriously because hayden is not going to stop pursuing vulnerable uh, women who have not got organizations and um, political parties and so on to protect them so there are going to be as we know there are going to be more hayden's there are more hayden's happening already and the police need to be aware of the nature of these of these pursuits um mm. so what what training did you feel that the police lacked well, I mean, they just, the idea, they just didn't really care. They didn't care at all that, you know, I, I, I presented no threats to anyone. I yeah. am just a stay at home mum with no car in a small village. Yeah. I presented no risk. And yeah. yet you treated me like I was a treated serious like risk yeah. and had to be pulled yeah. off. Yeah, had to be pulled off the bloody, you know, society. Yeah. for seven hours to wait to be questioned about a bloody calling someone a pig in a wig it yeah. is insane and it yeah. is wrong on so many levels that I presented absolutely no risk I am they saw my baby they saw my child yeah. they saw, you know they came risk. into my house you yeah. see my life it wasn't I wasn't a risk and you treated me like I was 
a risk, a serious risk, and you took me away from my children. Yeah, and yet rapists are let off with nothing, and you know, yeah. violent criminals. Yeah, letter to ask, oh, yeah. Well, letter to ask to come and have a chat. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was really in court is. shocked at the, the judge who looked seriously out of her depth. She looked as if she was trying not to look as if she didn't know what was going on, but she didn't know what was going on. When we later discovered that the evidence wasn't even looked at, it seems yeah. to me that people are here have just been stonewalled, blinded, haven't they? Oh, a trans person's involved. Yeah, yeah. This person must be right. Yeah. All our sympathies must be with them. That is not justice. That is blindness. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. justice should not be blind in that sense. Um, I think now, so the appeal, obviously, the judge you got was a bit more clued up, but it's worrying mm. that judges like um, that was it, Margaret Dodd are, are sitting Margaret there. Dodd, yeah. You know, mm. she, she had time to prepare for this. You know, it, well, she wasn't yeah. put on the spot. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a, we know the justice system's in a mess and we know why it's in a mess because successive horrendous mm. conservative ministers, you know, Phelan Grayling and Michael Gove made massive cuts that were not mm -hmm. done in a sensible way. We know that, but the result is still the responsibility of government and um, mm -hmm. obviously serious stuff needs to be put in because social media are not going to go away. We know exactly. there's a lot of, of uh, people, you know, since President Trump got banned, we look at all the women that have got banned off Twitter for saying perfectly reasonable mm -hmm. things, not hating anybody. Um, social media is yeah. going to continue and the judges need to get up to date. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also interesting to look at the circles of collusion on these things, you know, I think with the Stonewall, mm -hmm. the Anne Sinnott's case about Stonewall um, should not be training the Crown Prosecution Service. It's a very important one that we'll be watching with interest. I'm hoping to ask Anne to come in a webinar because you know yeah, policy yeah. capture at the highest level means that people right at the bottom, like you're living a peaceful little life in your village, in your house, mm -hmm. are being affected by massive ch yeah. changes in society, which will be up, which will be reversed. We've already seen the government step away from the you know self ID and the mm -hmm. GRA reform. And we will see sense yeah. prevail on these issues as well, but it's taking a while. And the circles of collusion stretch very deep, you know, down to a local and people yes. have to carry on taking their money, doing their job, even though they're not behaving in those jobs as if as they should be. Um, just a final point um, to ask you, um, obviously you're back in your village and your family. What do your family and friends make of your experiences? I think um, my husband, was very upset he was angry at the way I'd been treated but my husband and I differ massively on the debate so my husband um, was pro self ID he thinks that you know we should just be kind and we should just give way to these my rights you know just give them away it's fine Ooh. so you can imagine uh, my yeah. you can imagine my being arrested um, yeah, set a light to that <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so we, we we really struggled. We struggled quite hard because it is such a fundamental issue to me personally yeah. as a woman that my rights are under threat and I don't react well when under threat. So my reaction is I fight and fight and fight back. Whereas my husband's sort of, you know, well, you know, people are born in the wrong body and I'm like, no, they're not. It, that's insane. But he's a very, you know, he's an intelligent, well-read man. And it blows my mind. So we we ended, you know, we end up with huge. So we can't talk about it anymore. That's it. That that yeah. subject is off the table. We talk about other things. So we've had to work around it. But I like, you know, he, he challenges me and I challenge him. Yeah. Like why would I wouldn't want to be in a marriage that was he agreed with everything I said? You know, that'd be a bit boring. So um, yeah, we 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 did struggle for quite a while. Um, my mum, she was very proud of me. She. You know, she's my biggest cheerleader anyway. She supports, yeah, she supports um, my, you know, she would, she personally wouldn't act like that because my mum's very, you know, she's a, a, an ex-vicar's wife, you know, she's very much um, peace and love. But me, I'm, you know, I've always been a bit of a wild card. So, but she's so proud. She said, you know, I'm just the fight you've given yeah. and, and she's watched me nearly fall apart. But she said, you know, I always, I knew you would be all right because you, that's that's you. Yeah. So she supports. My dad supported uh, me as well. My brothers and sisters, yeah, all supports. The only person that you know didn't really support it was was my husband at first. <laughs> so was, but everyone else, you know, was uh, have and all his friends, everyone he would talk to, they're all, oh, you know, go Kate, like good for her, 
you know, so this is not the first the system. System. pretend pseudo medical scandal to divide people. You know, we've, we've had no, lobotomy no. for many centuries. Exactly. People believed in astrology, you know, and hired astrologers. So yeah. That's it. So have some quite recent monarchs and presidents. There are lots of yeah. uh, dodgy, dodgy pseudoscience things that many people believe in, hundreds and hundreds of yeah, years. Yeah. I class Absolutely. the transgender craze as one of those, and a lot of them do a lot of harm. Yes. Insulin coma yes. therapy came up the other day. Hello, mm. insulin coma is like you know taking someone to the edge of suicide, and um, yeah. and no further. So yeah, thanks. Well. Well, we're very proud of you, Kate. We're very proud of your strength you. and the fact that you were an individual by yourself and you dug your heels you. in. <laughs> yeah. to do that and it can be a good thing. Yes. So we'd it like to thank you once again. We, we, we will let you know how we get on with our free of information. Bye, everyone. Thanks very much. Dog, we've oh, got the dog. dog. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, let Back me see if I'm get him. Oh yeah, let's have the dog. Let me get, let me get him. That's good, don't we? Oh, <laughs> so Kate, the Here dog played, this is the dog. What's his name? Moss. Morrissey. 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 Okay, okay. right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> After the singer. <laughs> of course, yeah. I understand that the dog actually played a role in your experiences with um yeah. <laughs> What, yes. what exactly, you know, we know dogs are very important to our everyday lives and cats, of course, but um, mm -hmm. what was the role of the dog in, in Hayden working out who you were? Oh, yes, because I, on my Mandy McGaldick uh, account, I posted a picture of my dog and my cat um, because I wasn't, it wasn't a sock account, as it were. I wasn't trying to hide. It was, I was you just, weren't it was, pretending to be somebody it was else. Just another account. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so he, so I put, posted, posted a picture and then um, Hayden had obviously worked out that it was me from my very cute dog. Right, so the and, dog was uh, you. Yeah, so yes. uh, Morris, Morrissey gave it away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. It's always nice to know how these people, you know, do their detective stuff and uh, be careful who you, you know, people say be careful. Yeah. Children <laughs> photos online. Also, be careful about putting your pet's photos on. Just moving to the side yeah. so you can't see my cat. Yeah. <laughs> Great talking to you, Kate. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, Take you. Care. Thank you. Bye. Before we finish, yes. Thank I'd like you. to Thank mention you. Um, a feminist, a young feminist who's died tragically mm. young, up in Sheffield. Um, it's important to remember people. Feminists often get written out of history, as we know. Um, it's important that we remember people that have fought our fights and that we don't allow them to be forgotten. So Sam Coleman, who died um, a month ago, um, was a local organiser of Women's Place UK. She was active in the resistors locally. She was in the Safe Schools Alliance, working to protect children from gender ideology in schools. And she was overall a great defender of women's rights. Uh, Sam gained media attention for um, the loss of women's single sex spaces by um, dressing as a man to try on a bra in Marks and Spencers, which is a bit like the Man Friday protest at the Hampstead Men's Pond when a lot of women turned up and pretended to be men. It takes a lot of courage to do these things in your own community. Um, and uh, it, we want to pay tribute to Sam before we close this webinar today. So Sam, wherever you are, thanks for all your efforts. We will not forget them. Did we do well, my darling girls? Did we really do well? We grew you up to be straight and strong To do your best to know right from wrong But we grew you in this awful world A world that's hard and tough for girls And part of your strength was to take it To take it and make it okay but it's not okay, my darling girls, in this fucked up, muzzled up.